Alrighty guys, we're back for Pirate's Fury, and this is an Outlaws of Thunder Junction standard brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's briefly go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, this was a suggestion over in the Discord, so thank you so much for the suggestion, it's gonna be a fun one. We're rocking Outlaws Fury in here, it's a 3 mana instant speed, creatures you control get plus 2 plus 0 oh until end of turn, if you control an Outlaw. Exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play that card. Pretty cool, man. I like it. So, of course, we have a bunch of outlaws packed in that are pirates as well. We got breaches in here. As a four of going to be excellent. We have a couple plundering pirates. Three mana, two, three. When it ETBs, you create a treasure token. And the treasure tokens are going to really come in handy. We have a small, like, artifact theme packed in too to work well with, like, Goblin Tomb Raider, for example. So I have Reckless Lackey here in the one drops. This is a one mana, one, two, first strike. Haste. Okay. And then for two and a red, you can sacrifice Reckless Lackey, draw a card, and create a treasure token. We wonder how often we'll actually end up using that ability, but it could help us like descend for the Enterprising Scallywag, which could be pretty cool, right? We do have Charming Scoundrel, not a pirate, but it is a rogue, so it totally fits the outlaw theme here. Now, more artifacts packed in. We have a couple dire flails. That could be pretty cool. We also have an eater of virtue. Also, could be pretty cool. We have a dowsing device. Also, also, could be pretty cool, right? We don't get to see this too often. This is a two-mana artifact. And whenever dowsing device or another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, up to one target creature you control gets plus one plus oh and gains haste until end of turn. Cool. Then transform dowsing device if you control four or more artifacts. I don't think would be unheard of in here at all, especially with all the extra like treasure uh, generation and everything, right? So we could potentially flip this into Geode Grotto pretty easily, which is a cave, taps for a red, for two and a red, you can tap this until end of turn, target creature gains haste and gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of artifacts you control, activate only as a sorcery. There's a reason I read this whole thing, I really do think it is kind of easy to flip this into Geode Grotto. Okay, the top end of the build, also rocking a couple Hellspur Posse Boss. This is a 4 mana, 2, 4. Other outlaws you control have haste. Nice. Now, when Hellspur Posse Boss enters the battlefield, create 2, 1, 1 red mercenary creature tokens with app target creature you control gets plus 1 plus 0 oh until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. So what's really neat about the mercenaries is we could like tap them down to put extra uh, power onto cards like Reckless Lackey or other things with like First Strike and stuff. Maybe a couple mercenaries buffs up the breaches to get that First Strike around like a Shieldred block or something. That could be really cool. So just giving haste to our thing sounds wild to me. We have another another top end Hellspur Brute is a 5 mana, 5-4. Five, Affinity for Outlaws, <laughs> so it costs one less to cast for each assassin, mercenary, pirate, rogue, and or warlock you control. It also has trample too. I don't think it's going to be unheard of to just drop this for two mana and be pretty happy about it. Over in the mana base, guys, we have a couple of Cavern of Souls. You call pirate more often than not, but there might be moments where you call human or something. We have a scene of the crime just for an artifact land that works with the artifact theme. It also like just isn't half bad overall. If you ever end up flooding out, then two, sacrificing it and drawing a card isn't that bad. We also have a Mirex packed in, again, kind of fitting the artifact theme, and a Crucible of Defiance. What is that total? That is a total of 21 land, which should be good enough for in here. Some other noteworthy things we do have all four. Play with Fire is probably going to do a lot for us. We have a couple Caught in the Crossfires, too. For a double red, it is a Spree card. For the additional cost of one, Caught in the Crossfire deals two damage to each outlaw creature. It's the bottom ability in here, though, that we want to look at. So for an additional cost of one, Caught in the Crossfire deals two damage to each non-outlaw creature. Okay, so it could be a one-sided board wipe for us. Pretty neat, man. Some honorable mentions over here. Great Train Heist was in the original suggested deck list. I cut it for this one this time around, though. Also, I was going to go for Lightning Strike instead of Play With Fire, but when we're rocking cards, that helps us see things off the top like Outlaw's Fury. I just think more one drops is going to be, or one mana cards is going to be a little bit better for us. And then the Fomori Vault almost made the cut as well. I believe this was also in the original deck list, but I started to get a little scared, especially adding uh, after adding all the Play With Fires, that we wouldn't have enough red sources on the board. Okay, so... 
I do my dandiest to save the more in-depth discussion for the end of the video. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and take this into some ranked and see how we do. All right, we'll see if we can get right into that first game. In the meantime, what am I expecting from the build? As far as mono red goes, this is probably a jankier version of mono red for sure. But I also think it's going to be pretty darn fun too, so. All right. Now this is not a bad curve at all, as long as we see our third mana in time. Yep, I like it. We go first too. Beautiful. Get that Tomb Raider down. Get the Scallywag down. Uh, Hellbrute might be pretty cheap in no time if we get to keep some things around. Epiphany Scamp. Oh, Charming Scoundrel. We're going to go right into that treasure and get a swing. You guys suppose they block with the Scamp to kill the Scoundrel, though? Oh, I guess they could block with Scamp. They could trade it, right? I changed my mind. Unfortunately... Scamp is beautiful for this board, and I, I think that gives them the choice to disrupt wherever they want to disrupt based on their hand. I'm just holding it back. Yeah, I mean, if they pop the Scamp for the Scoundrel, that's fine. We'll see what ends up happening here. Be a Monstrous Rage. Okay, they might pop it just to go face at that point. You go play with fire. Play with fire. Monstrous Rage fizzles out. They take out the Scoundrel for sure then. That's probably worthwhile. That's a lot of damage that's not going to face them. That's, we're saving four to our face at that point. They have something else here. A second Monstrous Rage just to get the four through. I'd say that all worked out relatively okay for us. Ooh, and if the Tomb Raider takes this away... Okay, okay, yeah, they're going four to face. Oh, crap, no mana off the top, though. That does slow us down a little bit. I'd say that all worked out in our favor, though. Elspur Brute is two mana if we get to keep these cards on the board. But we won't even need a land off the top. If we get to keep these... So it was three cards for the price of one, which is why I believe that worked out in our favor, even though we still took four. We do find mana. If we go plundering pirate, we have a we have two things to swing with. They might trade into Scallywag, but at that point, is that is that really that bad? Um if they don't trade, we'll have Hellspur for one. It might just be better just to play that anyways instead of swinging. And two. No, I think I'd prefer a trade and just save the Hellspur for next turn. And they might take the four here too. We'll go ahead and trade into Scallywag. So uh, the Hellspur goes back up to two, so we don't have it off the treasure. So if we would have done opt the treasure before combat, we wouldn't have had the swing on the Goblin Tomb Raider. Is the thing there. Wow. Looks like the opponent is stuck on two mana right now. So, Elspur Posse Boss is pretty good. Gives haste to our outlaws. But how we want to do this, right? We want to bring everything up to a trade worthy to the performer and make sure we full swing then. So the mercenary is really coming in handy. They go ahead and take it all. They drop the concede. Unfortunately, getting stuck on two mana was probably pretty rough for them. Especially when... So they were rocking the performer. So the performer, of course, when you disguise, it costs three. So they weren't able to actually flip these at all or actually get them down as... I'll tell you what, though. If they did see their mana on time and they were spending all three mana to get a 2-2 two -two ward... I think they were going to be in trouble regardless. And then this first play, too, with our play with fire, it like I said, it still just worked out uh, so significantly in our favor as well. So 
I would say the opponent got a little bit unlucky overall not seeing the third mana. <laughs> but also, we don't know how much mana they were playing in the deck list too. Like maybe they were only playing 18 land. And so being stuck on two is just something the deck would do. Like when you play with 18 land at that point, you're saying the deck can actually be sustainable at two mana as well. So who knows? Like that's one of those instances where I would love to see the opponent's decks just to see what's in them, see what, see what all they're playing with. All right, opponent goes first here. Definitely going to keep this. Hopefully we see the third in time for the breaches. Battlefield Forge. Ooh, Warden of the Inner Sky. This Caught in the Crossfire might be pretty good, but this Warden's probably going to get a counter before we have time. Let's just keep the Play With Fire open to pop the Warden before it gets above the Caught in the Crossfire. Maybe a second Warden, actually. Okay. I think it's still worth, of course, the Play With Fire on the first one. Yeah. It's still worth it. Outlaw's Fury. Can you imagine how cool that would have been in the last game, too? With how wide we were able to go. All right. Restless Lackey. No swing, right? I'd say they have a good enough block. We might be able to cheese the one through. I think I'd rather just keep the Lackey back as a blocker for us in case they do something surprising. I'll take the one before... Okay. Okay. Oh, they're passing. I guess we take out Warden, because this is going to be a Resolute Reinforcements, which they could have done on their turn. Maybe it's not. Maybe they missed. They could be keeping removal open. Reaches over the Plundering Pirate, I would say. We still get the treasure if we want it. Which I would say we do. The bottom ability on breaches. Exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. GG opponent, really? Oh no, guys. The first two opponents here getting a little caught up on mana, I would say. Of course, I'll take the victories, man, because they're really hard to come by. <laughs> and our deck was curving out nicely. We're seeing a lot like, like we're seeing things when we need to see it. All that's very, very noteworthy. So between the breaches and the outlaw's fury... Hopefully, we're just constantly having extra things to play off the top, too. Uh, the play with fires really came in handy there, too. Yep, yep. yep curved out beautifully. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Um, Even though the opponents got unlucky with their mana against Mono Red and Boros, both of those deck lists are very capable at two mana uh, for some time too until they actually get their third. Okay. I like the hand. I think it's a little slow based on the opponent going first here, but you know, we're on the draw. Maybe we'll see one of our one mana cards. Ooh, Skrelv. Okay. All right. So right into Dire Flail, I suppose. Uh, don't get me wrong, though. Turn one, getting your equipments down on turn one isn't bad. I guess I would prefer a creature, though. But still, sp actually being able to spend the mana when we have it, beautiful. Go into Mirax, then, right into Scoundrel, over the Scallywag, I would say. Scallywag's probably going to be better after the Breaches. Oh, Slaughter Singer, Bant Colors. Dude, Bant Toxic? I'm scared, bro. Okay, well. They don't they don't trade into the singer. If we go wicked roll on scoundrel, we get the two through, but then how much danger are we in? I say we ramp, keep a chump blocker. They could call red with the screlve though, so either way. Yeah, I'm gonna go treasure though. We could always equip the dire flail, I suppose. It is only one. It is a 3-1. Maybe they trade then. I think keeping the chump blocker, making them call on Skrelv is a little better. 
Oh, buddy. If we would have went Enterprising Scallyleg, we would have had a pirate for the breaches on the next turn. Probably going to need the uh, Caught in the Crossfire. I'm going to save all the mana available, keep Scoundrel as an emergency chump blocker for the turn in case they do something crazy here. Yeah, so just, just keeping the treasure for extra mana, just in case. Caught in the Crossfire could really do a lot for us here. So the best bet, I mean, of course, it would be pretty terrific if they end up going wide. But they could keep protection. They could keep a counter spell open. I'm not really sure what Bant Toxic is running. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If they full swing, we block the Skrelv for sure. Dude, it's been forever since we've seen an Ivy. Bant list, huh? Oh no, this is a rogue. Okay, luckily we will have the four, though. Oh, and we don't have the trade into the Skrelv because the Slaughter uh, Singer gives it plus one. So we'll, we'll jump here. We'll take the one poison. And then for four mana, we might wipe this board, guys, but we don't know what this is. And if it's like a spell pierce, then we're in danger. Especially if we end up wasting that treasure just to run right into a spell pierce or something. It could be it could be slip out the back too. So because the spell thief is a rogue, we have to activate both of these abilities. Do we just wait for their turn? They have even more chances to see protection off the top. But maybe they end up playing some creatures that we'd... No, no, we can't wait. We can't wait. I'd say that would be way too risky. It's still risky right now doing this at with their one open mana here. If they slip out the back, I think it would be the Slaughter Singer. What do you guys think? Um, And of course, Spell Pierce would be devastating. Right now. Oh. Oh. And the uh, Gleeful sp Oh, no, that was perfect, dude. They were able to protect two of their things. Gives plus one, plus three, gains flying and toxic one. So they were able to get around the crossfire for two of their creatures. At least we took out Skrelv, but we're going to die, dude. Holy cow, huh? Good stuff. Going up to four. Toxic four. They have... We're going to be at eight. Eight poison. Holy cow. wonder if there's anything new to add to these Bant lists from the, the last couple sets. I haven't really been paying too much attention to any of these. Unfortunately, Dire Flail just kind of chilling right now. It is an artifact when it comes time, but hopefully we can have a blocker on the ground. Hopefully they don't give Toxic to the Ivy. Hopefully they don't draw anything that targets their creatures. So we got to get, no matter what, we got to get blockers on the ground. And, and Breaches is like the best possible blocker for the Slaughter Singer. Or anything for that matter. Like First Strike always goes the extra mile. No attacks. Come on, opponent. Come on, opponent. Miss off the top, right? Let's get, like, give us one more turn. See if we can do something. A lot of power packed into this uh, uh, Aspirant's Ascent. This totally did a thing for the opponent here. I, w I don't know if it would be a four of or not, but I could definitely see just a two of, and they have both of them here, right? I could totally see that. We got that full swing. Here's the question. Do we want to take out the Rot Priest or the Singer? Um, why not both? Let's do it. Either way, if they have something that targets their creatures, they win, so. Oh, Seat of the Empire. What a good draw. It wasn't a victory draw, but that was really good opponent. Uh, also, we're going to die to just normal damage here soon enough. Just like double down on Scallywag for the turn. 
hopefully that's enough for us. Because we could go breaches, attach the dire flail. But getting a couple scallywags down for the um, potential swing with the breaches next turn, maybe find a little bit more. Okay, it's only a matter of time until the opponent finds something. We'll have two open. I could see... I could see full swinging and trying to find something off the top, off the breaches. Because we could go treasure, and then we could go uh, exile the top card. Then we'll have three mana. We could pretty much play everything in here except for our two top end. Oh, what if we see that, though? I'm going to swing. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at any point, they could draw and win off the Rot Priest anyways. So, we're going to exile off the top, and then we're going to create a treasure token. And any blocks would be completely fine. 110% fine. Uh, I bet they just drew a land. Honestly, well, I guess it could be protection, too. No, no, no. If it's protection, they win, so... Oh, Lackey helps us block on the ground and we can attach the Dire Flail to it. Take that. Not bad. Not bad at all. We get to keep the treasure. They go for the Mirex. That makes sense. Yep, at any point. At any point, this is the opponent's. Be it opponent. Let's see it, buddy. I'm on the edge of my seat, actually. Slip out the back. All right, that's it. That is uh, doubling down with the Rot Priest. Yeah, I'd say it was worth the risky swing then. All that, like... Wow. That was really loud. <laughs> Coming out of my speakers. Hopefully it wasn't as loud uh, for you guys. Heck yeah, I still had fun that game. That was sick, opponent. Bringing just Bant Toxic to the table. Now, now, for sure, you guys got to let me know in the comments. Is there anything new that we could try out in Bant Toxic? Because I'd love to revisit this. It's been forever since I played with Ivy. Still looks relatively strong. I mean, it got there. Like, it could have got there much sooner, honestly, if they drew a little better. So, cool, man. This deck's playing out beautifully, too. The curve is just, like, the curve is wonderful so far. It's really... Like, we're hitting the things we need to hit on time and, and some. So, yeah, not bad. I'm satisfied. That save with the cotton in the crossfire was pretty wild to you in that last one. Okay. Um, with the opponent going first here, I'm not, I'm not convinced with the hand, but I also don't mind it. We have, like, the turn one... Keep the play with fire. We have the turn two ramp on the scoundrel. If we need the third for the breaches on time. Oh. Ankle biter. Huh. And gruel colors. Oh, and Naya colors. Oh. I mean... They... They... Um, do we, no? Yes, no. We don't pick it up. <laughs> we keep our play with fire. We save it for something uh, more important than at that point. I um, think I'm going to try, try to cheese that one through. We're going to go treasure. The block here is fine. Take the one. Trying to think of like what kind of Naya build Ankle Biter could be in. Mirror's Garden. And for one, no, saving it as a blocker. Okay. This Outlaw's Fury has to do something today, so hopefully this is the game for that. Breaches isn't bad. Only one Pirate Swing. I'm gonna play the third land as the third land. We're going to swing, see if we can get that other one through. We're going to set up with breaches number one, see what happens. B, spot removal. We don't know what we're playing against, so <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen here. Kappa Tech Wrecker. 
Okay, death touch counter comes in on that. Uh, hard hitting question. Oh, and unfortunately, play with fire doesn't help us here. All right, breaches. Number one is out of here. They still have a swing if they want it. They decide no. I'm still going to save that play with. I feel like the play with fire is going to do something at some point. Maybe even if it just comes down to hitting the opponent's face, right? All right. Breach is number two. Reckless Lackey comes down. Oh, crap. I guess we just play it to play it. I was going to swing, but... Oh, no, we can swing. We can swing. Because instead of a treasure, we'll just take the Kappa Tech Wrecker out of the blocking equation. They could trade with Scoundrel or chump the Lackey because of the first strike. Actually, all the first strike creatures is going to be terrific against the Death Touch. They take it down to 16. We are definitely having trouble uh, slipping damage through. Blossoming Tortoise. <laughs> Hold up, bro. Is this a turtle deck? I hope this is just turtles, man. There's a lot of turtles packed in. Okay, Goblin Tomb Raider. We could go Scoundrel, Treasure. Tomb Raider gets haste. Take the Kappa Tech Wrecker out of the blocking equation. Oh, Blossoming Tortoise is on the board now, too. Might have... Might have a really good hit here with the Outlaw's Fury. Okay, we'll go Outlaw's Fury. Let's do it. Full swing. I'm going to go treasure to set up for the play with fire in case we need that. As far as blockers go, we're going to let him keep them all. Right? Nah. I'll take uh, I'll take the 1-1 one, one out of the blocking equation, actually. <laughs> and then we'll trade into the bigger things. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. But the first strike is pretty wild here, man. It really is. Oh... And block the scoundrel. They're, they're wondering, because we have so much open mana, too. They decide not to. I'd say no matter what, Outlaw's Fury is the play. Mountain. Okay. The so one, two. They're taking eight. The first strike hits there. And that's good, huh? Wow. Goblin uh, Tomb Raider can come down next turn. I'm just going to keep the play with fire open. Uh, not knowing what we're up against is pretty scary, though. Like, at what point is the opponent just going to be like, by the way, surprise sunfall or something, you know? Hard-hitting question. Takes care of the breaches beautifully. Yep, that's going to happen. The scout. Okay. Oh, my... Okay, Rith is in the build. I have no clue what we're playing against, dude. Okay, they go for the... They go for the scry. They go for the swing. Get a little bit of ramp on the tortoise here. Comes in tapped, luckily. Was that actually a, a risky play uh, last turn with the fury? Not, I'm not sure, and probably not. Not since we're... Yeah, I'm not really sure. I'm going to hit face with Play With Fire, bring him down to six, get that scry. Instead of, like, using it as removal, because we could end up removing the snake and the scout. Oh, Eater of Virtue. Pay two, pay three. That scoundrel Tomb Raider. I'm going to send the Eater of Virtue. How do you guys feel about that? It could be pretty good. Oh, Hellspur Posse Boss. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to wipe. We're going to go caught in the crossfire. Two damage to each non-outlaw creature. They still got two cards in hand. Three land open. All right, not bad, not bad. 
Now we could just go everything onto the board. No, 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 we can't. I'm just going to go for the Goblin Tomb Raider. It's a good swing. Yeah, I was going to say Charming Scoundrel pay the, um, the treasure for the Tomb Raider, but then Tomb Raider no longer has haste because we don't have an artifact after using the treasure. Terror of the Peaks. Okay. Now, hold on just a minute, dude. They get to... Oh, oh, it's only one, though. It, it, because the scout enters, it's just one. They do find a land, though. Dire Flail. They have three blockers here. Three blockers. It's... And one card open here. I, I believe it is just... Everything. Scoundrel. Call Treasure. Elspur. Full swing, right? And we full swing wide at this point. Because that's three. And then if their last card in hand is uh, removal, we still get two through regardless. Wow. Very cool, man. Very cool. I do wonder if the last card in hand is actually going to be removal. GG opponent. We're doing great so far, guys. I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> I'm very satisfied with that. I like the the terror of the peaks came down, so I'm guessing the opponent had some kind of um some kind of combo list. Mid video pack, let's go. And we get that rare wild card here too. Beautiful. Key to the vault. Nice. I think that's actually my third one. <laughs> Alright, let's let's try to get one more game in before we talk about the list here. Yeah, Key to the Vault, we played like one or two of them in an Is It combo list like uh, one or two weeks ago. And that combo list was pretty cool, but we really struggled to pull anything off with it. For this last game of the evening, win or lose? Who the heck cares, man? This was awesome. Great evening of magic here. Had a really good time. The deck's doing exactly what we want it to do. We go first? Heck yeah, dude. All right. Let's go Lackey. Get that swing. So I guess any amount of creatures off the top could really go the extra mile here. Well, they might use Play With Fire on Lackey, but they probably want to save it for our turn two. They, they don't know we have a better turn two, but they can assume. Like to keep it open, right? They do end up keeping it open. Start with the swing then. Give him a tough decision. Take the one or wait for our two drop. They decide to not take the one. We descended. <laughs> a little bit of ramp. I'll tell you what, turn three, Hellspur Posse Boss could be really good. Second mana comes down. They go ahead and plot up the slick shot show off. Nice. Okay, cavern. We're just gonna get the mountain down. We're going for it, dude. Turn three, Hellspur Posse Boss. Get the swing. Down to 15. Hopefully we can pull off something sick next turn with this Hellspur Brute. Because we go Cavern, Hellspur, Outlaw's Fury, Full Swing. Actually, is that lethal? That's lethal. Oh, well, hopefully they don't hold blockers back, though. Looks like they're going to hold blockers back here, right? I think so. Oh. We, we might. <laughs> First of all, no blocks. So maybe Monstrous Rage taps them out. Put the Monstrous Rage on the Slick Shot show off. They do a lot of damage, but we're about to really pop off next turn, so. But they don't know that. <laughs> they don't know what's in hand. All right, dude. This is going to be awesome. Holy cow. All right. So, Cavern of Souls will call Pirate. No worries there, right? Elspur Brute. 
Full swing. Outlaw's Fury. Oh, buddy. Well, GG opponent. We had a terrific win rate today, guys. Five matches, 80%. We got a little lucky in the first two, but I'll tell you what, the deck really proved itself in those last two, huh? Cool stuff, man. Thank goodness we went first there too, by the way. All right, guys. Let's go ahead, go over the deck list again. That was good stuff. Pirate's Fury. Thank you so much again for the suggestion over in the Discord. Guys, if you're ever interested in dropping suggestions in the Discord, feel free to. Um, down in the description, we have that Discord link, and we also have that Patreon link, too. And speaking of suggestions, I always prioritize patron suggestions first, and then the next priority is Discord suggestions, and then the last priority is comment suggestions. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in joining either of those up, check that description. Also, while you're down there, definitely let me know in the comments what you thought of the build. This was sick, dude. I love pirates. Oh, you know what we didn't do, though? Didn't bring Pirate Cat to the table. I really missed an opportunity. <laughs> Instead, we just got uh, Cowboy Cat because, you know, back by popular demand, honestly. <laughs> I was going to switch back to the normal Red Cat, uh, but you guys like the cats with the hats a little bit better. So I thought, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll still bring back the Cowboy Cat. Anyways, guys, about the deck, huh? that has nothing to do with the list. I think the crossfire was actually really cool, but I think I'd drop it down to one, but it's probably going to do a lot. Hmm. That's tough. We'll keep it at two for now. Well, honestly, I'm not changing anything with the list, so. Eater of Virtue, we scried today. We didn't get to see it do too much. We have a couple of these dire flails that didn't do too much overall, but I do think that they're going to work just really well with the lackey. And the breaches, too. Anything that, like, buffs these first strike creatures like the Outlaw's Fury, you guys could totally see why we have all four Outlaw's Fury in here. But do we need all four? Probably not. We could probably drop them. But I like all four, and I really wanted to see it today, too, so that's why we got all four. The Hellspur Posse Boss was sick. The Hellspur Brute was really sick, too. I don't think we'd want two of these, though. I think, like, the one on the top end is actually perfect, and there's going to be a lot of moments where it's pretty cheap, huh? Really cool stuff, man. Yeah. Uh, scene of the Crime didn't hold us up today with the tap land because we didn't see Scene of the Crime today. I still think it's going to be fine and dandy, especially when paired with, like, the Goblin Tomb Raider. We got to see while playing with the Tomb Raider that it is kind of difficult sometimes to actually keep artifacts on the board when you're not seeing, like, your equipment and stuff. So definitely noteworthy. Cards like this, man, the Outlaw's Fury, the cards that just buff your board state wide by two power. There's just so much potential for these cards, dude. And if for some reason you don't win that turn, then you just might find more off the top. Or maybe you have open mana and you see like a play with fire too or something like that. Just really, really neat, man. Yep, I love the list. I would say like if you have a lot of these cards, this would totally be worth trying out. Especially if it looked fun to you, too. Uh, dare I say, it was pretty powerful today, too. More testing required, of course, though. It's only five games. It's not a lot of games, so. All right, guys. Hey, like I said, definitely let me know what you thought of the list down in the comments. And I will see you in the next video.